Peace, Father dear. Peace, everyone. Father, we consider it a great, great honor to be living in this day when your spirit is pervading the earth and letting the people know that God is here, the kingdom has come, and the will is being done as uh, the figures of the heralding angels on the door depict. It's interesting to note that um, it was on May 11th that I uh, that <clears throat> that the director of correspondence for the Humanities Lovers International had written a letter and I had received it on that date. May, uh, received it May 24th. It was written on May 11th. And it wasn't until July 8th when Father blessed me to respond to him. And that letter reached Karachi, Pakistan on July 19th. And it was on July 16th that Reverend Karashi had a revelation of Father's deity. This particular letter of correspondence was not included in the series that was printed in the New Day of September 9, 1978, AD 33 FD. So I'd like to read you at this time this letter. It's headed, Begins with His Holy Name, Who Has No Beginning, Our Lord the God, from Mustafa Suja, Humanity Lovers International, International Board of Correspondence, to Holy Mother Divine, the Mount of the House of the Lord, Woodmont Estate, Gladwin, Pennsylvania, 19035, USA. Dear Holy Mother, first of all, receive my thanks for your affectionate favor and maternal care reflected through it. We, your children, are very grateful for it. Your favor was received on July 19th, after a long wait for us. But blooming with fragrance of maternal love and messianic awe. On July 16th, Reverend Karashi was reclining in his chair, concentrating and meditating over Father Divine and trying to know from the spiritual world about the authenticity of his messiahhood. That almost suddenly, the whole room was filled with splendor of a refulgent and resplendent face. What happened after that, we are not exactly aware. We know only this much that this figure embraced Reverend Karashi. And Reverend Karashi became unconscious, and then he got a bad fever, with which he is still suffering. He is now improving, but yet he is unable to tell much, and of course, absolutely unable to write any letter to you. So I have to write to you this time also. I think that this figure was of Father Divine, because for him, spatial and temporal limitation are no hindrance, and for him, New York is as near as Karachi. Am I correct? What you have written from that I for myself has become sure that he and you hold the office of Messiahhood, because Father Divine and Mother Divine seems to fulfill <clears throat> all of the signs of Messiahship as revealed to Reverend Karashi. But the only decisive authority among us is Reverend Karashi, so we have to wait until he gained full consciousness from this spiritual shock 
of sens sensualization of the non-sensual reality. It might be interesting for you to know the qualifications of messiahship as revealed to Reverend Karashi. They are, one, Messiah should lay a divine foundation of sacrificial way of cross so as to banish STN completely from God's world, gaining full victory over him by suffering all the persecution and prosecution with full perseverance and courage. Two, he should bear the greatest suffering no one in the history ever had, even greater than Jesus. He should not falter on the path of human emancipation. He should necessarily, three, he should necessarily be perfect in complete accordance with divine will. Four, he should be the essence of love, mercy, and compassion manifesting his love all the time without fail. He might be preceded by Elijah Revin, Riv, Revividus, who will lay foundation for him and will preach and let him know in every corner and nook of the world. Is Reverend Karashi that herald of Father Divine? This is a worth knowing question which Reverend has never answered, but only Father Divine can answer. Five, he should be the source of light and love and life. His advent will bring forth light that will drive out the prevailing darkness and will result in a new era of peace, justice, and equality, turning this rotten world <clears throat> into a fragrant, Paradisic paradisiacal world, world of paradise. Six, he will unify whole humanity through his personality. He will end all the demarcation of color or race or language and will commemorate the new era of human equality by having his holy bride from a different racial stock. <laughs> Seven, <clears throat> he will unify all the world religions by his infinite personality and the manifestation of the new dispensation of truth which he will bring with him. To Reverend Karashi has been revealed a blueprint of that dispensation which functions as humanity lovers international aim and purposes. That's in parentheses. Eight, he and his bride will represent father and mother aspects of divine love respectively. His bride will be the purest woman ever created and far purer than Mary, Jesus' mother. Nine, his bride will be all love and will embody in her infinite manifestation all the unprecedented good qualities unheard of and unseen before. 10. Both he and his bride will be spiritually infallible and sinless. 11. Messiah will at once identify Reverend Karashi as his chosen servant. He, through his infinite omniscience, will know that Reverend will be significant builder of messianic kingdom as his servant. 12. He is trinity of reason, justice, and goodness, and he is the name of eternal knowledge and eternal goodness. 13. He is the sole representative of God on earth. He is the phenomena and the noumena. He is eminent in the universe by his infinite power and knowledge but he also transcends it. 14, he is not born normally. 
The biological changes in her mother womb commences from fusion of divine sperm, the word, with the ovium and culminate in his birth in nine and a half or 10 months, never exceeding. 15. He cannot be expressed in spatial or temporal categories. There is nothing like him either in things or in our mental and material categories. 16. He is co-eternal and co-existent with his true father, the God. He is all-knowing. Nothing is out of his range of knowledge. 17. He is the owner of all causations and can bring miracles, a temporary suspension of natural laws at his will. Then he goes on to say, I think so much is sufficient for today. Please airmail some divine literature and please write very soon because we think we have reached our home and we want to be quick to welcome him. In infinite name, your son, Musafar Suja, ends with his name who, it, who has no end, our Lord the God. I would like now to read the letter received from Reverend Parashi. Um, received on August the uh, 10th, mailed on July the, written on the July the, excuse me, 28th. <laughs> Thank you. It's headed In the eternal name of the pre alpha who is without beginning, the God, dear parent divine, I and you are not we but one. With this precious fact, I is everything with realization of you as you and belief in you as you. I'm very pleased to commence our relationship. You, my parent divine, the Holy Father divine, and Holy Mother divine are one, being the masculine and feminine mass manifestation of one and only primeval divine word. I as I, so nothing, for example, without you had never any existence as such. I always was I, I am I and I will always remain so because of my I consciousness and unwavering belief in you as you. I was with you when you were in your primeval word state, unconscious and resting in beyond, beyond state as Alpha. I also was with you when you incarnated firstly, but could not fulfill your mission completely because of being unable to unite with each other as father and mother of the whole world. Father aspect of the word has to be crucified and taken to heavens while Mother Divine has to manifest itself as Holy Spirit and I as I has to manifest partially as Paul. Now the purpose of creation of the whole cosmos is going to be fulfilled and now in your this manifestation you have been able to unite successfully as Father and Mother. I as I can feel that whole creation, the heavens and God himself is rejoicing when I as I am able to unite with you as you. And now the divine mission is going to be completed. The mother divine, the father divine, and the son divine have met each other in their transcendental spiritual state. And soon the dream of the heavenly father, mother, God is going to be corp corporealized. As you are infinitely aware from your omniscience that we, as we met on the evening of July 16th, in the super mundane spiritual world when you as you come to wake in me your only son and servant the I realization as third of the three we the three in form but one in essence how great are we as we probably only we know in our omniscience and no one else can know I am nothing in comparison to you but conception of I without you is observed as you know, my spiritual self was with you since 16th of July. My 
family, people, my disciples, my children, and my lovers were worrying about my long unconscious state and were thinking that I had become sick due to some spiritual shock. Now I have returned back from you, but my heart and mind is with you, O oh my beloved parents. Now we have to commence our course for humanity, course towards absolute emancipation together, though my share in the course will be nominal, but I want to give my give all my energy, willpower, and determination in your love. When I, as I bow to you, as you, my God, personify, East and West unites. Christendom and Muslimdom unites, all through you, the truth personified. I, as I proclaim you to be my Messiah and God, and unite with all, my disciples, lovers, spiritual children, and friends in peace mission movement, recognizing the ultimate reality, the cause of all cause, the God Almighty in you. From now on, I will feel joy and happiness in spreading thy words and establishing the new world. My actual position is under your blessed feet. Guide me now what to do. I am waiting for your loving favor. Please answer back in your very earliest convenience. Thank you, parent divine. Thank you, father dear. Thank you, mother dear. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Your servant and son, Abdul Rahman Qurashi. Thank you, Father, to read the answer written on August 25th, 1978, AD 33 FD, Reverend Abdul Rama Karashi, 1 Thrower Das Building behind the Taj Mahal Semina near Eidgah, Karachi, 1 Pakistan, my dear Reverend Karachi. Father Divine and I have received your letter of July 28th relative to the wonderful revelation you have had of Father Divine's actual presence with you. As you have found him through deep concentration and wholehearted desire for truth, walk therein, and the consciousness of his presence will remain with you to lead, guide, and protect you. He will be so real to you, you will consult him in all things and walk and talk with him in the affairs of daily life. This is a glorious time in the history of the world when the people generally are awakening to the realization that God is personified in the body of Father Divine whose Holy Spirit is within them to bring them out of the mortal version of corruption and death into the peace, joy, and abundance of the Christ consciousness. Father has come, as Paul said of Jesus, in the likeness of sinful flesh, to condemn sin in the flesh, Romans 8, 3, that men might learn to take on the mind of Christ, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. Philippians 2, 6, and 7. As you say, it is in the recognition of the nothingness of yourself as a person that you can unite with and become one with Father and me. There can be no greater honor than this, but there is no greater responsibility to get and keep the immaculate conception of Father that you might always remain in complete subjection to his Holy Spirit. God alone is to be glorified, and you are glorified in him, even as I am, to the degree that you live in the exact, the exact life of Christ in virtue and holiness. We look forward to the appearing of the Christ in many bodies of the children of men, as Father's Spirit awakens within them. When the consciousness of God's presence unfolds, and the Christ is brought to fruition, there will be one unified body of Christ, one in all, and all in one. Then we shall have a beautiful world, and heaven will be a reality on the material plane, as well as in consciousness. As the Spirit leads you to write, I shall be happy to hear how Father is unfolding his presence in your midst. Wishing you peace, and may the spirit of the consciousness of the presence of God abide with you, that the abundance of the fullness of all good things may be your portion. I am yours very sincerely. This is M.J. Divine better known as Mother Divine. It's 
wonderful that this has all come about at this time of the Woodmont celebration. And it really brings to mind this wonderful message that Father gave when the representative from India came to him in 1938 in New York City. And Father was so happy. And it seems that this experience that these letters of correspondence reveal are really what Father was seeing at that time, in my way of thinking. I'd just like to read this um, message where Father said, I will prove to the world conclusively God's infiniteness and omnipresence with victory for all will who will accept him, Father Divine. Our Father's message given at the banquet table, 152-160 West 126th Street, New York City, New York, Friday, December 9, 1938, ADFD time, 4.13 p.m. I'd just like to say this, this um, picture that uh, accompanies this message was um, actually taken in 1954 at the celebration, the first anniversary of the celebration of Woodmont as the Mount of the House of the Lord, when this uh, group of holy men from India came to learn of Father's ways and to break bread with Father. And it's, they're pictured here and it says, Father and Mother Divine, as here entertaining guests from India at the Holy Communion Banquet Service held in the chapel dining room at Woodmont. Their consciousness didn't seem to be quite what this reverence is they couldn't seem to uh, equate the spiritual life with all of this splendor that Father was manifesting. <laughs> but um, just like in the correspondence, when the um, when the uh, director of correspondence said. It was hard for them to accept of America, and why not Asia? And it's because Asia really has been the leader as far as spiritual enlightenment. But we know that Father came to demonstrate the spiritualization of material things here in America. And I look forward to them making this great demonstration, not especially um, coming here in person as they say they want to come home but to come home would be to come into the full realization of God on the material plane so that they can enjoy the abundance of the material uh, abundance of the fullness of every desirable blessing on the material plane as we have enjoyed and experienced because we know that Father Divine is God and I think as, and I know because they have the spiritual consciousness and, and now have, pers have recognized the personification of God. In other words, put the body around that spirit. Then I look forward to them really making a great demonstration there in India on the material plane. And I feel this would be the way that they really would proclaim Father's deity to the world by overcoming the, um, the, the problems, the social and economic problems that have beset the people of Pakistan and India. As you know, to those of you who don't know, Pakistan is the northern provinces of India. Uh, when they were under the British rule, it was all considered India. But uh, at the time of their independence in 1948, Pakistan uh, separated from the rest of India. And it was, uh, I understand, mainly because of religious 
reasons. There was a, more of a, a greater concentration of the Muslims in Pakistan, if I'm correct, and the Hindus in the rest of India. So it's really all India. So Father says he, I mean, the commentaries, commentary prior to Father's words says, through infinite love, mercy, and tender compassion to all mankind, God, Father Divine, is continually calling to them to accept of this great salvation, if they will, that they might be truly emancipated from the deplorable conditions and circumstances and all undesirable conditions that they are now undergoing through the disrecognition of their real emancipate in a bodily form. Come all ye nations of the earth to your God, your creator, that you might escape the wrath to come, that you might no longer be bound under the versions of men in their hatred, resentment, prejudice, and what not, and everything else that has befallen and will befall all who are not conscious of the actual presence of God. As a delegate from India, as one representing 350 million people of that country, one Mr. Sri Bashudev, who was in our midst at the afternoon banquet, accepted of Father Divine's gracious invitation to all visiting friends to speak. On behalf of the Indian people who are now suffering under undesirable conditions and different cults, Mr. Bashudev requested Father's personal presence in India to deliver his people and make it a heaven, even as he has made this country heaven. He stressed the fact that no one could free them but Father Divine, and it was for this reason that he had come to give his humble thanks and pay homage to Father personally. For this cause, we can say to all the nations of the earth, Come all ye nations of the earth, all ye that are heavy laden. Come ye, the downtrodden and downcast among the nations. Come ye, that are sick, weary, and sad. Come to God, your great creator, and he will give you rest. He will heal your sin-sick body and cast out your doubts and fears. Come ye all the ends of the earth, come now, while it is not too late. For your Savior, your Emancipator, and your Lord is waiting to emancipate one and all. The foregoing statements are those of the transcriber and following is Father's invitation to visiting friends to speak. Father Divine, Peace, everyone. Now we have good health, goodwill, and a good appetite for everyone. All of the inhabitants of the earth can partake of the same if they desire to. Thoughts are things, and things are thoughts, as I have foresaid. For this cause, we desire to put forth our thoughts in words, in deeds, and in actions, that others might be partakers of them. At this instant, I would like to say we have visiting friends with us as usual. If there are any of them who would desire to speak, feel free to move volitionally as we do if you care to. If you do not care to move volitionally as we do, give us your name, addresses, and professions. We will gladly introduce you according to custom. Remember, you are not obligated to speak from the angle of expression such as those of us are observing, unless you wish to. Speak from the diverse angles of expression according to your respective mission and calling and according to the dictates of your own conscience. You will be honest to your own soul and God. No doubt, excuse me, you will be honest to your own soul and God, no doubt, will abundantly bless you if you do. I thank you. Just before I take my seat, I would like to say, if any of you of the co-workers, followers, and friends are stopping at any of the extensions as being termed Father Divine's Peace Mission extensions, remember each extension is an independent unit. You are stopping at one place or any of the places. If for any cause you are not satisfied at such places, it is your privilege to change to any other place where you can get accommodation. If those in charge desire to accommodate you, it is your privilege to do so. You are not obligated nor required to stay at any place you do not wish to stay. And again, I wish to say not any of those in charge of the different places have any right to keep anyone they do not wish to stay. They do not wish to stay with them if they are not agreeable or if they are not satisfied for them to be there. 
Each and all are free as far as I am personally concerned. Yet I have no personal jurisdiction according to the flesh over those things for each and every individual is an independent unit and his or her or their respective extension an independent unit. I thank you. The above statement as given in reference to the invitation for the public to speak, all visiting friends and others of all professions still remains. The invitation I have given is free for one and for all. I thank you. As aforementioned, the visitor from India responded to Father's invitation and after a few more things ensued, Father sang and spoke again as follows. All hail the power of Father's name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Peace, everyone. How glorious it is to be here in the unity of the spirit of mind, of aim, and of purpose. I stress it vividly among us that we might go forth into all the world under the spirit and commission of the true converted state of Americanism, evangelizing and emancipating all humanity. I have arisen at this particular instance to say it is a privilege to realize in and at the time Jesus was crucified there were many around and about Jerusalem. After the crucifixion, according to the scripture, yea, the gospel, the Holy Ghost descended upon those who were with one accord. And the Holy Ghost, according to the scripture, yea, the gospel, added 3,000 to the church as being termed the church in one day. Thank you, Father. Today, we have the privilege to recognize and accept of a delegate as a delegation from India representing those of India, amounting to from three to 350 million being added to this kingdom in one day. With such a recognition, if all who as represented, if they are all as sincere as he, as the representative appears to be, all will be abundantly blessed and I will emancipate them. But as in the days of old, there may be some under this domain as the subjects of this country for whom he is a delegate may not be in the place to wholeheartedly receive me as his honor did. But how glorious it is to know all of the 300 or 350 million, if they will but accept of me, they will be emancipated. It is not by power nor by might but by my spirit. Therefore, I declare as I have declared to you, I am here, I am there, and I am everywhere. Aren't you glad? So glad. Think not to say within yourself, I must necessarily remain here personally, or I must necessarily go there personally. As God is omnipresent, God's spirit, his presence, and his activities, since God is a principle with or without a person, can and will be felt as effective where he is personally absent as where he is personally present. Nevertheless, if necessary from a personal point of view, there is nothing impossible, impossible for me. There is nothing impossible for me to do. Oh, it is a privilege to know your God. For when I speak, I speak infinitely. I speak universally. I speak omnipresently. For God is actually present everywhere. When you know the omnipotence of God, you know God can and will work as effectively in one place as another. If you realize his allness, aren't you glad? Oh, so glad. From 300 to 350 million represented in this delegation, take these thoughts to consideration and recognize God's actual presence. Build upon this foundation continually and though I will be with you as well as with others, I will also be with those of India. If these my followers running into the millions as aforesaid throughout the world 
as the thousands and thousands under this particular jurisdiction at this particular extension are emancipated from the undesirable existing conditions of our present day crises and depressions, God himself can emancipate all humanity. <laughs> well, as with an individual, so with a nation, and as with a nation, so with all nationalities universally. If God can bless one, he can bless all others. Aren't you glad? So glad. Recognize God's actual presence. And I say to the delegate, as a delegation from India, if you have faith in me and continue in your sincerity, lo, I will be with you and will give you victory over all of your trials and tribulations. You will not have an occasion to fret nor worry individually nor nationally. Aren't you glad? Right. When you recognize what it actually means to tap the source of all supply, to tap the omniscient one who will give you wisdom and understanding and will give you your real emancipation, what a glorious privilege to recognize such a privilege and to recognize such a principle that I have lifted as your real emancipator and the emancipator for all humanity. Truly might have I said, come unto me all ye ends of the earth and be ye saved, for I am God and beside me there is no other. How glorious it is to realize the truth. I know they do not want it to be true, but it is substantiated, it is confirmed, and it has been declared. They cannot stop this. <laughs> For as with the Indians, as they are represented from India, so with all the nations of the earth, if they will, if they will but accept of this message. I say the underprivileged of every nation, every language, every tongue, and every people, I said the underprivileged of every nation, every language and every tongue and every people, I came to emancipate you. <laughs> if after the manner of men, as what they can see and as far as what they have seen, I would be the most underprivileged among all men. I would be the most downtrodden among all men. But they cannot do a thing with me. So glad, so glad. <laughs> they cannot hinder me. Aren't you glad? So glad. I said they cannot hinder me. Aren't you glad? So glad. If they cannot hinder me personally, they cannot hinder mine. They cannot hinder those who have chosen me. This day I bring all of the nations of the earth together more effectively. I transcend the gravitation and I go into infinitude. I will not allow the earth planet to hinder me. I will prove to the world conclusively God's infiniteness and God's omnipresence with victory for all who will accept of him, as well as those of you who are under my personal jurisdiction. Aren't you glad? So glad. Then I say, tell India the message has been received, and if they, as being termed a nation, will all fully accept of me as the representative apparently has, so will they be emancipated from depressions, from suppressions, and from the savages of civilization, and God himself will be with them as a real emancipator. Aren't you glad? All right. You need not look to see me personally, especially. Nevertheless, if I wish to go there personally, I can do so and none can hinder me. Through my condescension in the country of which has a constitution giving men the privilege to serve God to the dictates of their own conscience, I came. Yet under such a constitution, the most savage of all civilization exist in and under this constitution but what says the scripture concerning the mystery where wickedness abounded much more does grace abound 
Herein are the children of God manifested and the children of the other fellow. Where the other fellow is most distinctly expressed and manifested, more will God be in evidence in the extreme reverse or contrast to the other fellow's expression. The extreme reverse or contrast to the other fellow's activities. That is the mystery of God's presence in such a savage country as this one. The foundation was laid okay. That is why I support the constitution of this country, for it gives men the privilege to serve God to the dictates of their own conscience. They are not prohibited under the constitution if they are willing and are persistent in their ambition to go on to perfection. By living evangelically wholeheartedly and by moving volitionally by the spirit and being governed by their highest intuition and being led by my spirit continually, they will in time bring the Christ to fruition. And when this is accomplished within, there and then they will have victory over the other fellow, the flesh and the world. They will have victory over all of the depressions and the suppressions of the savages in the present world. Aren't you glad? Okay. I know there are savages in this country as well as in other countries, but I transcend each and all of the savages and all brutality. I have transcended all of the brutality of the savages and all of those who are representatives of the savage rules and regulations. I have transcended them and I have given this people all who will accept of me their real emancipation. Aren't you glad? Oh, now tell them I said it. I have unified all of the nations together in and under my jurisdiction. This is a, as a sample and as an example for all people universally. Now I shall bring them all back together as they were in the beginning. In the beginning they were all of one language and of one speech. They were not of many different flags. I shall have it in the end as I had it in the beginning. They were all of one language and of one speech, and all were of one nationality or one race. Or race, one nationality or race, if you please. They were just representing the human race. I am bringing the nations of the earth together in the unity of the spirit of mind of aim and of purpose and I shall cause them to supernaturally and exceedingly, surpassingly love me. Aren't you glad? Right. Yes, they shall love me. They are worrying because so many people love me. <laughs> they have not seen any love yet. Amen. With or without a body. Yeah. With or without a body, they shall love me. And they shall call me Father. Go back! Go back! <laughs> you know this is good, is it not? Yeah. <laughs> it causes you to look good. It causes you to feel good. It causes you to think good. And it causes you to act good. Yeah. That is the mystery. It causes you to be renovated completely. It causes you to be translated and be new creatures. You are not the same as you used to be. You are truly and completely emancipated. Your souls are revived and your bodies are renovated. You are recreated. You are new creatures. Aren't you glad? All right. They will love me more than they do. They will love me more than they do. And I will cause all of the nations of the earth to come, even as India has come this afternoon, as representing some 350 million added to the kingdom in one day. Aren't you glad? Oh, then I say, as another appeal of the same one extended to all of the underprivileged and mistreated of all creation, come unto me. I will give you your real emancipation. For it is immaterial to me what men think or say that which I speak into consideration it is fulfilled today if I had not known I would not have known for what purpose my time this week had been sacrificed if I had known and did not know I would not be able to say why 
but apparently to you, from a personal point of view, I could not say bye-bye. <laughs> you see, I did stay. You see, I did wait. And now you can see why. Three million and some hundred thousand, three hundred million and some more million are added to the kingdom in one day. I bear no personal record, no literary record of the delegate coming as God does not have to make appointments or have any engagements. The spirit of my presence will do the work effectively, especially when all are led by my spirit and when they recognize my actual presence. He came as a committee of one representing 350 million, more or less, and he as representing each and all of them has been received. Then I say to the representative, I send forth this message of love to all of you, through all of my co-workers, followers, participators, admirers, and friends. I will go with you all the way. I will be with you all the way. I will help you all the way. If you will but only obey and do exactly what I intuitively say, and I will speak intuitively within you and among you. I will inspire you. I will lead you. I will guide you. Hence, you will sing in unison the composition as afore described, I will go with you all the way. One in all and all in one. For this is the way I came even as I was to come. Here you all are and there I am. Here you all are universally, all of my true and faithful believers and followers and there I am. There I sit, I stand and I go and I come universally. We all in, excuse me, we all in unison will sing it together. The orchestra will proceed with the song. I thank you. Father well, says, I'll go with you. Thank you. 